Welcome to KGSM TV. I'm Zoe Jane. And I'm Jaden Miller. Students at Missouri Western State University hit the highway to participate in the second annual Griff's Give Back event. Griff's Give Back is a Missouri Western tradition that allows students and faculty to give back to their community. This year, the Griff's traveled to King Hill to clear the area of debris and trash. Students split into two teams, black and gold, and spent about three hours cleaning up local streets and sidewalks. After all visible trash was cleared, the Griff's were taken to Hyde Park for a free picnic lunch before heading back to Missouri Western. I think events like this is just, it's so important to just give back to the community and it just shows that Missouri Western has a big heart and they care so much about their town and their community. For more information about events like these, you can visit missouriwestern.edu. Yeah, and that was such a nice community gathering showing that people really enjoy like It was a great event. I really enjoyed doing it. And I actually got to speak with Kim Sigrist. She's the director for the Center of Service. Oh, Here's what she had to say. How lovely. Thank you for joining us for our Griffin Media Live interview. Today I'm joined with Kim Sigrist, the director of the Center for Service. Kim, how are you doing today? I'm great. How are you? I'm doing good. So for some people that don't know um, about the Center for Service or what you guys kind of do, could you just explain what this organization is. Absolutely. So the Center for Service was established a couple of years ago um, with the vision to get our students engaged in volunteerism to give back to the community, but also to ex give them some opportunity to go out and do um, applied learning in by volunteering, which um, a lot of people don't think about that, but there are so many applied learning opportunities through volunteerism. So a student can actually earn up to three free general elective credits by doing volunteerism through the Center for Service. So for 40 hours of service, a student can earn one free general elective credit. And so um, besides that, we also do other great things, and I'm sure we'll talk more about that in terms of big group uh, volunteer projects. And um, so yeah, that's a little bit what we do. That seems like a really great deal. So for students that want to get involved and help out, how do they go about doing that? So um, I always recommend, first of all, to visit our webpage. So um, if you search on the Missouri Western homepage for Center for Service, you'll it'll take you to our page. There's lots of great information there. We have volunteer opportunities that are available. Um, and then there's also an interest form. So someone can fill out that short little interest form and say, hey, I'm interested, and then we'll communicate back and find a time that we can talk and see what the student's interest is, what their time's like, um, when they want to volunteer, how often they want to volunteer, what their interests are. You know, are they interested in working with children or do they like animals or maybe they like to help with the homeless or um, the, the opportunities are really endless. So I always like to visit with a student um, to explore those opportunities because many students just don't really know where they can volunteer. That's great, and it's good to have those opportunities so yes. that everyone's kind of interested and gets involved in a way that benefits everybody. So I think that's, that's right. Great. Yes. So I know you guys had Griff's Give Back really recently. Yes. I was there. It was so much fun. Um, what kind of upcoming events are you guys going to have from now on? Yeah, so we did the Griff's Give Back Day of Service um, a couple of weeks ago. We had about 130 students, faculty, and staff participate that day, which was a great turnout. Um, coming up during homecoming week on Thursday, October 6th, we'll do our campus beautification day. So it'll be a day similar to what we did with day of service, but we'll, we'll stay on campus and we'll do some projects around campus. Last year was our first year doing that. We worked in some of the flower beds, we planted flowers, we, we trimmed some um, of the flowers back and um, did some other things just around campus. I know we're already talking about things to do this year. One of the things we're talking about doing is the big griffin that's painted on the sidewalk outside of the Union. It needs a fresh coat of paint. And so that's one of the things we'll do that day is to freshen up that griffin on the sidewalk. So it's a great day. It starts, we'll volunteer from 2.30 to 4.30 on that Thursday. Um, so yes, we encourage everyone to come out and get involved that day. My other question was just gonna be like, how can, us at Missouri Western and just like people involved in the community of St. Joseph, how can we better support this program? Yes, yeah, so we have um, obviously great support from the community. Anytime I have a student who's interested in volunteering, you know, sometimes we look for really specific kinds of opportunities based on a student's um, interest or in their major or something like that. 
Um, the community is wonderful to say, yes, we would love to work with one of your students. They really do appreciate the skills and the time that our students can bring. Um, and yes, it's really a matter of um, the students thinking about what they want to do and how they can give back. And a lot of times students think, you know, when we talk about earning the free credits and 40 hours and, you know, I always see that look on a student's face of 40 hours, oh my gosh, that's a lot. Um, those are 40 hours that do not have to be done during one semester. They can be spread out over an entire year. Um, they can be done at multiple places. So I had a student come in yesterday who has done multiple volunteer things um, over the last several months, and he's now almost up to 40 hours of service, and he didn't even realize how that he was there. Um, but he really, really enjoys volunteering, and so as he does those little things, um, those hours all built up. And so, yeah, so he's very close to earning that first free credit. So it's just um, any time I can talk to students, um, I always just love to encourage them um, I get pretty excited about what we do and so um, and we, we figured out this semester so this was an interesting thing is I did some math which isn't always my favorite thing but if a student wanted to complete and get one credit hour over a semester um, it's like three hours a week if a student did the whole semester and volunteered three hours a week I can guarantee everybody has three hours in their week that they could use to get back to someone else. And I know we talked earlier about how much you enjoyed going out and doing the service and how um, that felt for you. And so yes, it is. It's a wonderful way um, for a student to, it's a great stress reliever. It's a great way to feel like you are giving back and doing something for someone else. And um, yeah, and it, it really doesn't have to be that big of a time commitment. I totally agree. I had so much fun at the Griff's Give yeah. Back, and I think it's really important to do that and give back to the community. What do you hope to see um, for the future of the Center for Service? Sure, absolutely. Our goal is always to grow the program from year to year. Um, we saw that um, last year. Um, the program started and we went right into COVID, so it was a difficult time to kind of get it launched and going. Um, but as we've kind of moved out of that, more organizations are, are asking for volunteers to come in. Um, there's the need is great. The need is great in the community. When you start to think about every organization that relies on and depends on volunteers to make their organizations work, um, there's never a shortage of need. And so, um, yeah, our goal is to con continue to do that, to build those relationships with the community, to engage our students and get them out, um, to, to get those applied learning skills, to make those community connections. Volunteerism is a great thing on a resume. Employers love to see that a student has done volunteerism while they were in college. Um, so there's just so many benefits for the students and for our community, and it's bridging that gap and giving back to the community. And that's a great thing to do. I Absolutely. love this Center for Service, and I can't wait to see what you guys do in the future. Is there any other information you would like to add? Um, again, just visit our website. Um, we're also on social media. We're on Facebook. We're on Twitter. We're on Instagram. Um, if you go to our website, you can find our link tree that will kind of take you to all those. Um, we put a lot of opportunities out that way, volunteer opportunities, and then we'd like to show off what we've done. So lots of fun pictures about our events and what we have going on. And that's a great way to let the community as a whole too know what we're doing. Yes, we'll be on the lookout for that. Thank you for joining us for our KGSM Live interview. We're going to send it back to you in the studio. Last week, our own Zoe Jane got the chance to meet with our new provost. If you happen to be in academic affairs, you won't be far from the office of Dr. Laura Reynolds, our new provost. A lot of times I think people wonder what a provost is, and a lot of times I explain that uh, it's part of the university and, and I get to uh, work with the academic affairs team to sort of help manage and make sure that all the classes and the educational experiences that the students have here at the university are high quality and that everything's working well. We all have the resources we need so that the students and the faculty all have all the tools and the opportunities they need to have the classes run. This goal to help students and faculty receive proper resources and care is well reflected in the friendly space that is the Academic Affairs Center. 
I then asked Dr. Elise Hepworth her thoughts based on her time working with Dr. Reynolds. I think the thing that I enjoyed most about her was her down-to-earth and very approachable attitude. She was, I, I knew from the moment that we had met her and listened to her in various interviews and when she gave her public presentation that she would be a perfect fit for us and I think I was right. And right she was. From Dr. Reynolds' kind eyes to her warm presence and generosity, it is clear that she has already made a good impression on the people of Missouri Western. She's here for the right reasons. She understands who we are and who we serve. It's the reason why I'm here. I deeply, deeply love the students that we serve. It is paramount to all else. And she also shares that vision but what drove Dr. Reynolds to join the Missouri Western community, and more specifically in academic affairs? This opportunity was really unique in that um, I'd had the opportunity to be a dean, but what I really wanted to do is work at an institution and in a provost's office uh, at an institution that was open access. Uh, I think that there's so much that we can do in terms of institutions that are this size and working with populations and, and students and families and community members that may not know what higher ed can provide, what, what that bachelor's degree can and those experiences can do for a whole lifetime. And so uh, Missouri Western was just a, a great opportunity. This great new addition to our faculty leaves you with the quote by the White Stripes that has become her mantra. To be like the squirrel girl. And take life one acorn at a time. I'm Zoe Jane reporting for KGSM-TV. Back to you in the studio. Thank you, Zoe. If you ever wish to meet with Dr. Laura Reynolds, her office is in Popplewell 214. We'll be right back after this break. Over this summer, several students took a trip abroad to London and Paris. And I got the chance to catch up with a few of these students to discuss their time overseas. Travel is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. So the trip was through a class called Madness in Europe. It's with Dr. Decca. And so we got to go overseas four days in London, four days in Paris. And we mostly it was to tour the city, but also learn a lot of the history that was part of what we learned in class. Uh, it just felt like I was in a movie just being there. It's a time for exploring, learning, and growing. Some of my favorite parts were definitely visiting the historic landmarks that are surrounded in various parts of Europe. Um, obviously, the ones that come to mind are like the Big Ben, the Louvre, um, Versailles. Those are some of the huge staples of not only those countries, but that part of the world. And I would say alongside not only visiting historic places in Europe, but I think it was definitely the, the smaller shops and the people that I met along the way that were a huge interest to me. There is a lot of preparation that goes into planning your stay in such a brand new world. So I prepared myself um, knowing that we were going in a group, um, making sure that I had everybody's numbers that way, like if I got lost or something or my phone got lost, um, there was just a way for me to get a hold of somebody and kind of keep up in the group. I'm a list taker, so I made a list of like everything that I would pack um, and need so that way I didn't forget anything. When it comes to long distance traveling such as this, one thing you are bound to learn is what you could have improved on for the next excursion. I also uh, made a note to not only pack what I needed, but with the extension of if I wanted to bring back things with me. So I tried to do not necessarily a bare minimum, but a comfortable minimum where I brought what was necessary um, alongside the added space in case I found uh, things I wanted to bring back with me to remember my trip by. Uh, one of those uh, being a lovely snow globe, which sits right above my TV now, and it has a 
a beautiful little crack in it now because because I did not uh, package it properly when putting it uh, into my luggage the second time. Regardless of any mishaps, it is clear to any traveler that the destination and lessons along the way is always worth the journey. Reporting for KGSM TV, I'm Zoe Jane. Wow, what a good story and what a wonderful <laughs> opportunity. I sure hope I get to go to Europe one day. That'd be a dream. Oh, yeah, I know you'll love it. And what beautiful photos that Benton and Wanda took. Gorgeous. I can't Absolutely believe it. Absolutely gorgeous. Absolutely love it. Anyway, as the school year continues, many students see a decrease in their overall mental health, sadly. Our own Jaden Miller tells us why noting the changes in your mental health is so important and what resources are offered here on campus. Research shows 73% of students experience some sort of a mental health crisis throughout the years. According to the Suicide Prevention Resource Center, mental health can affect many aspects of one's life, including reducing their quality of life, physical health, and academic achievement. A lot of students tend to get more stressed out when school starts. There's a lot more things on their mind, and they have a lot less time to focus on themselves and things that keep them happy and things that they like to do. Although the school year can add stress, Missouri Western offers a multitude of resources to help those struggling with their mental health. So the primary thing that we do is provide um, counseling, which it's important to note is a free service included with your tuition and fees, but it is free, no additional charge, and it is a confidential service. So we operate like any healthcare provider would, like your, your doctor or anyone out in the community. Everything is completely confidential that a student would share with myself or any of my colleagues here in the Counseling Center. The Counseling Center also participates in outreach, where you can find Missouri Western counselors at various events tabling giveaways that share information about what they do at the center. They also do outreach workshops where they talk with classes about stress management. To schedule a meeting with the Counseling Center, you can make an appointment by accessing the center's website through Goldlink. Reporting for KGSM-TV, I'm Jaden Miller. For more information on mental health resources here at Missouri Western, they can be found online at www.missouriwestern.edu. Missouri Western hosted their first diversity and inclusive training fair of the year with students from all across the country and world. The campus looked to expand diversity and was also looking to educate everyone who was interested. With more on the story, here's Kenan Bielovit. At every college across the country, there is one thing that will forever be there, the diversity. No matter where they come from, beliefs they have, or any shape or size, Missouri Western is open to everyone. With recent tensions going on across the world, Director of Diversity and Inclusion George Hudson hosted the first diversity and inclusive meeting in the Student Development Center in Upstairs Blum Union. Hudson spoke about why he decided to host the event and what his goal was. The goal is to introduce um, students to the value of diversity, equity, inclusion initiatives um, at Missouri Western. Diversity and inclusive training offers multiple courses which you can become certified, such as microaggressions, social biases, and gender equality. Freshman Miguel Paz Blanco from Honduras talks about why he attended the event and what he hopes to learn from it. Because I know I have a lot. Uh, growing in a very conservative family, I know I have some things that I would like to change or would like to learn more about. Hudson would also mention how these courses could be used as a framework for the future. Of course, we give them a framework to be able to be an advocate for our underrepresented student populations. And hopefully they will have a greater appreciation and respect for uh, the philosophy of diversity, equity and inclusion. Hudson will be hosting the event every other Tuesday from 5 p.m. to 6 p.m. Reporting for KGSM, Kenan Bielwats. To find more information, you can visit the Student Development Center from 8 a.m. to 4.30 p.m., Monday through Friday. A new cat lounge in St. Joseph has officially opened its doors. Our, our own Jaden Miller brings us the story. The St. Joseph Self-Expressions Cat Lounge and Rescue opened their doors on Sunday, September 11th. The new business is owned by a group of women who have finally fulfilled a lifelong dream. After caring for animals independently for years, the three decided to open their own nonprofit rescue. The Cat Lounge is located at 300B South Belt Highway and is open Monday, Tuesday, Friday, and Saturday from 2 to 8 p.m. The lounge does require an appointment at a $10 entry fee, and you can make an appointment by contacting them through their Facebook page. 
Ariel Schlorf is one of the business's three owners and says that although the rescue has only been open for a short while, they have already managed to rescue close to 50 cats and kittens. All of us have been rescued for a long time. I've been rescuing since I was 16, um, starting with pit bulls, moving on with cats after I became a registered tech. And uh, Mardell started rescuing me probably close to six to five years ago, maybe. Although the lounge itself can only hold 12 cats, the business works hand in hand with fosters to care for the animals until they can officially arrive to the lounge. Being a nonprofit organization, the Self Expressions Cat Lounge and Rescue does encourage and accept donations. Even in places like St. Joe, or maybe you don't think it's such a big problem, it still is. Even with um, maybe you don't always see a stray out, but it's still important to realize that it's still a problem across the country, not just in big cities. In effort to help other small businesses like theirs, these animal-loving owners invited multiple vendors to their grand opening to support local. By branching out to other businesses and connecting with their community, the lounge hopes to see an influx of business in the coming months. Reporting for KGSN TV, I'm Jaden Miller. To learn more about the lounge, visit the Self Expressions Cat Lounge and Rescue Facebook page. The Association for Latin American Students held a salsa, salsa fiesta night in Blum on September 13th. Zoe Jane has the story. Upon first glance, this night looks like dinner and a show. But in a few short minutes, the students were shaking things up. So tonight is salsa night. Basically, we have two professional uh, salsa instructors coming in to give a salsa lesson to all everyone on campus who is interested into learning how to dance uh, salsa. So yeah, and we're also serving salsa with it as well too. This evening of dance lessons is the first of several events to kick off Hispanic Heritage Month with a bang. Alas, nailed it because the turnout spoke for itself. I. I did see it in a group chat and I saw it on campus and I went to a black student unit union event and they were talking about it as well. So I kind of heard about it everywhere really. The evening was fun and lively. Many students from all walks of life went from not knowing any salsa moves to adding their own individual flares to the routine. Yeah, so it's kind of similarly to my, the organization uh, Allies uh, is to bring more culture and awareness to um, to Missouri Western to bring more diversity and to give the Hispanic students on campus kind of like a space safe space space since we're our population isn't really as big as you know other ethnicities on campus. So, um, and I encourage also other people who are not Hispanic to also participate in this. It was an excellent way to bring people close together through song and dance. Everyone took away something new about Hispanic heritage and they enjoyed every second of it. Reporting for KGSM TV, I'm Zoe Jane. What a great story and what a fun way to start Hispanic Heritage Month. If you're interested in participating in similar events, email alas.mwsu at gmail.com. We'll be right back with MWSU Sports after the break. The Missouri Department of Conservation is located on Missouri Western's campus at 701 James McCarthy Drive. All you have to do is open the door and walk in. Once in, you will see all the sorts of animals, live animals, and rawr. Anyways, here's another snake. And a fish. So cute. Outside, you can see ponds, trees, and walking trails. There are even activities for kids. Stop by sometime between 8 a.m. and 5 p.m. Monday through Friday. Go Griffs! Welcome to KGSN Sports. I'm Kenan Bielowatz. And I'm Harry Loomis. Griffin Soccer is looking to improve on its one one and one conference record this weekend, but if you knew what's gone on behind the scenes in recent years, you know there's a lot more to the story. Every team goes through change, but few have seen as much as Griffin Soccer with head coach Leah Stringer. Originally hired by Chad Edwards, Stringer just got to town when the first major change occurred. I got here, moved from Texas, I want to say maybe a week, week and a half later, he resigned. Uh, and then, and next thing you know, I'm helping with the interview process for my next boss. In July 2020, the choice was Aaron Avila. However, he resigned weeks later due to personal health concerns. And a month later, the school hired Damian Macias. The two gelled well together over two seasons before Macias took an associate job in Montana, meaning that Stringer was now in charge. 
He's done a lot for me just in my uh, journey as a coach and just in my development. Um, so I knew whatever he was doing was the best decision for him and his family. She works harder than anyone. She's here before everyone, here after everyone. So um, yeah, just doing all things necessary to prepare the team, I think, is one of the things that she's, I wouldn't say, she's definitely grown as, but something that she's always had for. Stringer's background comes in goalkeeping which appeared to be the Griffins' biggest question mark entering the year. Everyone knew an offense with Kaylee Campbell, Jaden Skinner, and Elizabeth Pujata would score goals, but how would sophomore Keely Cronenberg do replacing Anna Mayer? Through 10 starts, she's been incredible, sporting an 836 save percentage and five clean sheets, even going four games without allowing a single goal. I'm not going to lie, she still amazes me sometimes with some of the saves she is able to make. I just look at Leo and I'm like, I have no idea how she did that. And I think that she's done a great job just been able to really get everybody's like, respect right away and done a great job just communicating with the team and getting us to do what we need to be done. Thanks to strong leadership, sturdy defense, and a close-knit team, the future of Griffin soccer looks as bright as ever. Reporting for KGSN TV, I'm Harry Loomis. The team has two games in the Sunflower State this weekend as Washburn is the destination Friday before heading up to Emporia for a matinee with the Hornets. The Igabods are off to a good start third in the MIAA, while the Griffins and Hornets sit six and seven. First off with Washburn, don't expect a lot of goal scoring in this one. Both teams are forfeiting less than a goal a game. No surprise that both are backed by strong goalkeeping. We already know about Keeley Cronenberg, five clean sheets and an 836 save percentage, but well, Washburn's Reagan Wells is no slouch either. Five clean sheets of her own and facing 3.6 shots on goal at night. Could be a tight, low-scoring game, which bodes well for Kaylee Campbell. Of her three goals on the year, two were game winners. As for Sunday, the Griffins could give Emporia State their first decision in conference play. Three games, three ties, can you believe it? This matchup showcases two contrasting teams as the Hornets have already scored 18 goals through 10 games, but have surrendered 17. The Griffins, meanwhile, have allowed just nine goals, but only one MIAA team has scored fewer goals than their eight. Defensively, the Griffins will have to keep an eye on Hornets' dynamic duo, Hannah Woolery and Mackenzie DeMarco, as they combine for a whopping 12 goals already. Offensively, this could be a day where the Griffins reel off multiple goals, something they've only done twice all year long. Despite a rocky season for Griffin Volleyball, where they currently sit ninth in the MIAA conference with a record of four and 10, hopes are still high to turn it around for the Griffins. With two key matchups against Newman University and Central Oklahoma at home this weekend, the Griffins look to capitalize with the home court advantage. Starting off against Newman, the Jets are coming off a 3-0 loss against Southern Missouri, while the Griffins are coming off a heartbreaking loss against Missouri Southern State, where it saw Missouri Western almost complete the reverse sweep down two sets to none. They would storm back in sets 3-4 and four to push the Lions to a fifth set, but would run out of gas. Danielle Moy looks to continue her terrific play this year as as of now, she sits tied for 16th in the MIAA for kills. And on Sunday, Missouri Western could upset Central Oklahoma. Central Oklahoma currently sit 15-2 and, and are looking to crack the top 25 standings. But the Griffins have shown in the past few games that against higher ranked competition, the Griffins tend to up their game. Prior games against Missouri Southern and Nebraska Kearney, where the Griffins took them to five sets, show that despite the higher ranked competition, they don't back down. Head coach Jessica Fye will look for her second and third home win in the, on this homestand. It's rivalry week for Griffin football as they head north to face Northwest Missouri State. They're coming in angry after last Saturday's overtime loss to Washburn. The Griffins found themselves playing catch-up from the get-go, having no answer for Ichabod wideout James Letcher Jr., who recorded 180 passing yards. After a shaky first half, Reagan Jones came on strong with two second-half touchdown strikes to Cooper Burton, including one in the final minute to force overtime. However, the Ichabods would score immediately, and Reagan Down's fourth down incompletion iced a 38-31 loss. Despite the loss, one clear bright spot emerged from this game. After just 157 rushing yards a year ago, sophomore Jonas Bennett went for 76 on Saturday with a touchdown for good measure. And the Griffins won't be the only ones playing angry this week. As for the Bearcats, they were upset last weekend when they took on Central Oklahoma and lost 23-14. The Achilles heel for the Bearcats was turnovers. The normally reliable offense gave up the ball five times. If the Griffins hope for a similar result, something's going to have to change, only forcing two turnovers through four games. Thank you for joining us for our first show of the semester. Please join us next Friday for updates on your local campus news. Remember, you can find all our stories on YouTube when you search KGSM TV. Have a good day.